Star Wars 7 by 7 episode 2065. Today, Citadel Rescue is the final episode in the story arc that informs what we are seeing in Season 7 of The Clone Wars. This one is actually all the way back from Season 3. It's episode 20, and that's what our Clone Wars briefing will be about today. Punch it! Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode. So, funnily enough, the episodes of The Clone Wars are scheduled, as far as I've seen, to drop at midnight Pacific time, which is 3 a.m. Eastern time, which is also exactly when the podcast here comes out every single day. So, unfortunately, I have to wait until tomorrow to do a Clone Wars briefing on the new episode for you, and that's what we'll be doing tomorrow with A Distant Echo. That's Season 7, Episode 2 of The Clone Wars. But because we've been talking about the story that informs that story, this first story arc of Season 7, I figure it's time to close out that old arc and talk about Citadel Rescue. Again, this is the third of a three-part story arc, and it is Season 3, Episode 20 from The Clone Wars. And I will say, and I mean this in a good way, that the episode felt a lot longer than it actually was. I mean, it's the standard 20-odd minutes, but they pack a lot of stuff into this episode. I mean, there are quiet moments where conversations are happening, there are action-filled moments down on the planet, there are action-filled moments up in space when the Jedi arrive to rescue our heroes, and there's even a very emotional death in the episode as well. The death from the previous episode of Echo the Clone Trooper, or the supposed death thereof, is not referenced at all. There's no mention made of Echo at all in Citadel Rescue, so we are left to believe that he was killed in action during this story arc, which obviously if you've watched the first episode of Season 7, you know that this is not the case. But let me step back and give you the general gist of the episode, which is this. There is a little island in the middle of a lava lake, and this this is going to be the rendezvous point where a gunship flies down to the surface, or a public gunship, and picks up our heroes to get them off the planet. So our heroes have to make their way to this little island inside a lava lake, and naturally they have to dodge all sorts of droids, and also Anubas, which are like giant wolf, alien, canine, hunter dogs sorts of things. and. Meanwhile, the Republic, when they arrive, they have four destroyers that show up and they have to launch starfighters and gunships and whatnot and fight their way through a blockade to be able to get down to the surface. And what they're going to find when they get down to the surface includes a still very gripey and very petulant Captain Tarkin who's saying things like, what if your Jedi friends aren't there when we arrive at the rendezvous point? And Evan Peel has to say, you know, shut up and keep walking, that'll take your mind off it. But Anakin is apparently taken with Captain Tarkin and says to Ahsoka and Obi-Wan that he does believe the Jedi Code sometimes doesn't allow them to go far enough to achieve victory, to which Obi-Wan pointedly responds that that's a very simple point of view. And another thing that Captain Tarkin and Anakin Skywalker have in common is a kinship with Chancellor Palpatine. At one point, somebody says to Tarkin, you know, are you concerned you're running your mouth off like that? And he says, no, I'm not worried about my career. I've fallen into favor with the Chancellor. He will support me. And Anakin says, oh, really? You know, I've fallen into favor with the Chancellor, too. Oh, really? Yes, really. You really? Yes, really. So the two of them kind of <laughs> look at each other like, hmm, who's really more in the favor of the Chancellor? So there gets to be a little bit of feather fluffing over that. Meanwhile, there is another situation that causes the teams to have to split up again, and Ahsoka and Evan Peel are left to fight off a bunch of those crab droids, but sadly, Evan Peel gets killed in combat, and he is able with his dying breaths to give the hyperspace information that he has to Ahsoka, and Ahsoka is able to carry his body back to the other team where ultimately at the edge of a cliff they have a brief battlefield funeral and they levitate the wrapped body of Evan Peel down into a lava stream which then goes over a lava waterfall and it's actually a very touching scene. It was beautifully done. But as Obi-Wan notes, they only have a moment to honor him before they have to move on and they do get to that island where a final showdown occurs and the prison warden is leading the attack on those staps, those, I think it's 
single trooper aerial platform. Uh, hopefully that's right. I love those things. The one that we saw first in the Phantom Menace. Anyway. So R2-D2 even gets involved in the action, uses his jets to fly up and put out a smoke screen to get the prison warden to lose his way and crash on the island, but he gets a grip on Tarkin and says, if I can't have the hyperspace information, no one can, in his crazy Chaz Palminteri voice. And that's when Ahsoka arrives timely and stabs him right through the chest and Tarkin is saved. Now the funny thing is, is that Ahsoka had been saying earlier, you know, Tarkin isn't even grateful that we rescued him, but this apparently was enough to get Tarkin's gratitude. And he says, my thanks, Padawan, and then says to Anakin, I see you've trained her well. And clearly that's a nod to his belief that seemingly Anakin is willing to believe that you have to go beyond the bounds of the Jedi Code to achieve victory and that having a peacekeeper killing somebody would be in line with that. I mean, uh, yeah, you know, it's sort of self-defense-ish, right? And I guess she you know, could have cut his arms off instead, but yeah, heat of the battle and all. <sighs> anyway, naturally the cavalry arrives and everybody is rescued and taken away. That's just about the end of the story. But there is a final exchange back on Coruscant that I want to share with you, and I'll do that after the break. Stay tuned. Hey Rebel Razor, I've made some changes to the asteroid belt level at patreon.com slash SW7X7 and they are all with sponsors in mind. So if you want to get the word out about your business, your product, your service to a dedicated Star Wars audience, then please check out patreon.com slash SW7X7 and look for the asteroid belt level for details. Again, that's patreon.com slash SW7X7. Welcome back. So problems happen again on Coruscant because Tarkin and Ahsoka each have half of this hyperspace lane information. Tarkin says, I was instructed to only give it to the Chancellor. And Ahsoka says, I was instructed to only give mine to the Jedi Council. So Yoda is going to have to go meet with the Emperor and hash this whole thing out. But... At the end of the episode, Anakin and Tarkin have an exchange, and then Anakin and Obi-Wan have an exchange. So I'm going to play the audio for that for you. If you're watching the video version of the show, YouTube picks up when it's the actual video from the show and shuts it down. So you're just going to see the waveform audio for this. But Tarkin has an initial word for Anakin and extends a hand for a handshake. And when they shake hands, you're going to hear a familiar music cue. Here we go. A job well done, General Skywalker. I wish more Jedi had your military sensibilities. Perhaps I can inform the Chancellor of your valor. I'm not sure what to think of your new ally. Well, I think we need people like him. This is a war. If we aren't willing to do what it takes to win, we risk losing everything we try to protect. Unfortunately, war tends to distort our point of view. If we sacrifice our code, even for victory, we may lose that which is most important, our honor. And so this, if you will, is another stone laying down on the path to the dark side of the force for Anakin. I do wonder where in his reckoning the idea of honor comes in, as Obi-Wan explains it here. So I don't have a bead on that, really. I've been racking my brains about it. And I wonder if it's something that's going to come up in you know, future episodes of The Clone Wars, in particular season four and five that we haven't talked about. We haven't talked about most of season five here on the show. But yeah, the notion of honor with the Jedi Code doesn't seem to be something that weighs too heavily on Anakin's mind. So I have to see if that ends up becoming an issue later on. But for now, that is going to do it for our look at this final episode of the story arc that informs the first story arc of Season 7 of The Clone Wars, and that is going to do it for this episode of the show. Thank you so much for joining me for it, as always, and may the Force be with you wherever in the galaxy you may be. Star Wars 7x7 is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox, and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars-related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited or their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2020 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.